Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. PD Beats here from Pop Turnus, speaking to Peter Thurnwald about Axo Kitty, which recently dropped worldwide on Netflix. Welcome to the show, man. Thanks so much for being here. Oh, thank you. Feels great. And, you know, I have to say, you have a great first name, by the way. First name, Peter. P- yeah, because yeah. that's my name. It's, <laughs> it's a really good name. I'll, I'll tell you. It's great. You know, anyone else called Peter must be a really great person. I know. So, absolutely. You know. I mean, yeah, it's true. I do like the PD Beats thing. And you're just like, oh, yeah, Peter. Yeah, PD Beats. <laughs> like, so, <laughs> but you know what? Um, The show is out. I mean, hasn't even been 48 hours and the reception is pretty think cool. it's been, has, has it, it hasn't been, been has it been 24, 24 hours. hours technically not even not even clo- like it's, yeah it was just ticked over like 12 hours i'm pretty sure it's the netflix effect though it happens quick how what's it what, what's this last like 14 hours been for you <laughs> <laughs> well it's been i didn't know when it was actually like i didn't know exactly when it was coming out because sometimes it'll release like 3 a.m 4 a.m or some weird time but for me it was like 5 p.m thursday evening mm-hmm. so i realized that it was up had to like do all the instagram stuff all of that but it, you know it's just been the the reception has been overwhelming and everyone's said had some lovely things to say about it so far yeah um and excited to see what's next and i want to ask because i feel like every process is different but like what was your audition process like for this specifically like did you know a lot about it did you know it was like exo kitty did you audition for a bunch of like characters like i'm just curious about your audition process yeah so i just finished um a show in la called players and i then this audition came through actually for mino so not for alex okay um and so i actually went the whole way and did like kind of like signed a test deal and did all that for mino um but of course that went to the beautiful handsome song Han, which he, he is perfect for the role i mean you know no one else could have played that as good as him so but that opportunity to get into the um room and do those chemistry reads with anna meet jenny sasha that kind of um i guess like put an idea in their minds that i could play alex yes who is the adopted korean in the show of course i'm adopted korean as well um and i think for them it just made a lot of sense so they made a few adjustments i went through the whole casting process again and booked the role did you know it was exo kitty like did you know the spinoff of all the boys like i had really I didn't know how big it was. Yeah. Because, like, I mean, it's really big in Australia, but I hadn't seen it until the audition came through. And then, like, the chemistry, of course, like, I then I watched the movies and did all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, But no, I was really not aware that it was going to be something of this caliber as well. It's interesting too because I feel like as soon like you're you know it's it's like it's official right you're playing Alex Exo Kitty Netflix right I feel like it's a cool kind of unique like situation opportunity for a storyteller like yourself in that role where there's familiar territory and unfamiliar territory at the same time there's the familiar territory because you're part of an existing universe already with a very popular to all the boys movies and everything but then there's unfamiliar territory because we don't know alex we don't know these characters we don't know minnow like we don't know these characters right did you think about that at all like that was cool like you knew a little bit but at the same time you also had no idea right <laughs> Yeah, definitely. And and molding the whole universe around like a fan favorite character like Kitty, you know, Anna Anna knows that character so well. Mm-hmm. So to have that as the basis of the spin-off, I think already was really strong in a sense of we kind of knew where the show could be. Um but again, it was exciting to see all of these new characters come to light uh and allow people to, you know, experiment a little bit more with like how much Korean culture are we going to put in? Um, like what what characters are we really going to bring? And how do they all relate back to that site? Kind of like that essence that to all the boys created with those three movies. 100%. Now, what we find out about Alex and Yuri and everything, are we considering that a twist? Is that a reveal? Like what is the terminology you want to use for that? Is that a twist and a reveal? You know what I mean? Like it's a twist, 100%. But it's a cool kind of reveal of, you know, these kind of connections with these characters and everything. What was going through your mind when you read that kind of scenario, that reveal or twist? Did you call it a twist on set? Like, it's a, it's a twist. I, 
I think it's more, I don't know if it's a twist. It's a reveal. I think it's a reveal. Yeah. yeah. I think it, because it, it, it twists, right? It's like, that's like revealing a char- a certain part of the character that, um, might not have been what they thought. Yeah, this is Whereas just, I just think finding like, out information about your 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 past. Right? Yeah, 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 I think I think because he's discovering it too. It's not so much of like, oh, like I didn't expect that to happen. Like, so a it's, reveal, it's a bit more yeah, like, oh, this... I was about to say it's it's not really a tw- like I don't think we can call it a twist. But what was going through your mind, kind of reading that kind of reveal and that storyline? Because that was really well done. You did an amazing job with that, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. I, I think look, it, going back to um kind of my as an actor you know you you there's roles that you can easily slip into and there's roles that require a little bit more effort and I think this has been kind of the first role for me where a lot of like the we call them like given circumstances or the situation that the character is in um was easy to slip into but I almost found that quite challenging as well because you know he's adopted He's going back to, I've never been back to Korea to look for my birth parents. I've wanted to, um, but I've always had this really, I guess, pessimistic view on it. Like if I did go back, there's a good chance that A, I wouldn't be able to find them or my mother, her, and B, would they even want me? And I think that realization of him kind of halfway through when he's talking to Professor Lee, um, it like hit home for me because I went, oh, shoot, like this could this could be a reality for me. Um, This isn't something that's far away from myself. And then of course, when the family gets reunited and I find out Yuri's my sister and, you know, big, big spoilers and all of that jazz, um, it did feel somewhat cathartic as well, you know, to see, to have that family. And I'm really, really keen to see where that can go in the future too. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's, it's interesting too, because, You know, I think after the pandemic, we look at shows like Exo Kitty, Peter, in a kind of like hit home way because of the self-reflection component. Because you see all these characters finding, like figuring a lot of things out, right? Doing soul searching, self-reflection. And I feel like during the pandemic, you know, a lot of people were doing a lot of self-reflection and figuring things out because they have the time to do so. So I feel like we see kind of storylines with Yuri and, you know, with Alex and everything. And I feel like they kind of hit harder because they, they're like instantly more relatable because of like the pandemic and everything. I'm curious if you thought about that at all. Uh, I think, look, the, these types of stories where it's kind of based along identity and belonging, are they universal yeah. themes? And I think when people have time to reflect about themselves, their situation, um, that's when those feelings start to kind of bubble up. And, you know, as we've seen from the pandemic, a lot of terrible things happen, but also I think a lot of great things have happened in terms yes. of, um, well, in, well, individually, um, like for me personally, I, it was an immense time of growth for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, hope that other people share that sentiment Mm -hmm. and that's reflected again in like exo kitty watching those types of shows you know they're feel good shows but they also make us kind of question like am i happy with the life that i'm in right now could i make it better could i make my relationships better could i feel better about myself absolutely and you know it's 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 uh dropped worldwide on netflix so people can see it what is your kind of mindset like as kind of a storyteller and actor, I mean, it is it is a little overwhelming, you know, to think about the fact that there's something that you all put your heart and soul in and worked on and then you rap and then, you know, you play the waiting game and press and then it was in your hands, but now it's literally out of your hands and then it is in the world's hands. Like, I guess you just kind of like try not to think about it a lot. It's kind of maybe hard, but like, what is that kind of mindset knowing that the world is going to be able to see your incredible show? Oh, I mean, I just feel, you know, blessed and uh, just the opportunity to be on the show um, and like a thanks to everyone who helped, I guess, me be a part of that. Like, I I couldn't be happier Mm -hmm. just with the situation that I'm in. And it's something that a lot of actors dream of, especially working with the diverse cast um, and working with some great creators. Yeah. Um, I mean, to be honest, it's, you know, it's overwhelming, but at the same time, you know, you're right. It's, 
kind of not in your hands anymore. I personally am very comfortable with that. I don't, I mean, again, if, you, if you're an actor, you'll know, but you know, you, you send out hundreds of cell tapes, hundreds before anything, you, you even get a bite. Yeah. And so taking that I like kind of ideology and then putting it into shows, there's so many moving parts and there's yeah. so many things that can go really right and really wrong. Um, but, you know, the special part is the connections you make, the friends you make, um, and sometimes that ends up making it a good show, yeah. which I think, you know, Exo Kitty, we had such a great time as a cast together in Korea and just just in LA as well. We, we've become really close friends. And I think for us, that's been the most important journey of it. And hopefully shows through on the screen um, a little bit. Oh, it <laughs> I mean, does, hope... 100%. Obviously, it's funny how there's some some characters that don't get along with each other as much as others, right? And then and then all the cast just see like, wow, they're all hanging out together at the premiere. You know? Yeah. <laughs> 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 it must be a bit weird <laughs> to see like, oh, why are they hanging out? Like, oh, gosh, why is Anna and Song on like hanging out all the time? Like, <laughs> like what's going on? This is weird. This is not normal. Oh, that, 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 that's so true. It's funny you mentioned kind of the auditions. I mean, if you think about it, because I have a lot of friends that are actors as well. I mean, your job is, if you think about it, you're a professional auditioner. Like, that's what it yeah, is. That, you, that's <laughs> just it. You, you audition, you will audition so many more times than you'll ever go. And, and actually it's almost work like when you book set. it, it's like, that's when you can kind of relax. And it's almost kind of like, yeah, you know. <laughs> Seriously, that's it. Like, even even now, I'm just like, okay, you know. Like uh, with Exo Kitty and all that, like I'm very, I'm always a very anxious person. I love to continue working, mm -hmm. so it's just, it's just a matter yeah, of finding next? more things what's to going do. On? Like, what's yeah, like what's next? I mean, it's it's so dumb. How dumb is that that my brain's like, what's next? When Exo Kitty was released like 14 <laughs> hours ago, but the like stop, stop, Pete. Like your brain is just, just calm down. <laughs> no, man, um, it's, it's always good to think ahead. And it's always good, but I'm the same way too. Like I wanna. I want to do a lot of things and like, I, I want to like, I, I want to make a project that I want to do another project, but I haven't even like, you know, even technically even maybe finished the first project. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Um, oh, sorry. What's going oh, on? No there we go. Very good. Um, yeah, no, but it's like, yeah, I, I totally, I totally get that. No, but it's good. It means we're, we're ready to go though. We're, we're ready. We're yeah. Ready. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm I'm ready to go. I'm maybe ready. it's a I mean, hey, it, hey, maybe it's a Peter thing. <laughs> it, it must be. It must be. It's in the DNA of the name. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, Peter Thurwald is a storyteller. That's what you do. We talked about you know acting and everything. That's what you do. You're a storyteller, man. So I wanted to ask you, just ge general, not even just Axel Kitty, what excites you about being a storyteller specifically? That's a great question. Um, I think for me, like. I'll start off by saying, like, I I love acting and I've done acting has been my way into the film industry. But as you said, like, I'm I'm a storyteller and I find a lot of fulfillment um, through songwriting, through writing scripts, uh, especially through directing and producing and making like an entire story come to life. Because as an actor, you know, you live and breathe that person. But for me, like, I kind of like to zoom out a little bit and see the whole picture. Mm -hmm. Um I mean, it, I've only really discovered this in the past few years where I've started to really tap into my story and what makes, like, what can I add to a very, you know, uh, the kind of constraints of storytelling, which will make something interesting and relatable. Course, yeah, yeah. And yeah, and like coming back to me personally, I never really investigated the angle of my adoption that much. I only really, I, I always say like I had a really early quarter life crisis when I was 19. Um, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know if I wanted to be an actor, um, but I knew that I wanted to find something. And so that was when the period of my life where I really wanted to go and find my birth mother and, you know, to like, I was this close, this close to buying a plane ticket, going over there, not telling anyone and just looking. Yeah. Um, and those feelings have now kind of matured. Mm -hmm. I think like I don't lose sleep over not knowing who my mother is, but it's kind of now like my secret weapon. And it's the same thing with like, you know, working on perfectionism or working on anything, I think a lot of that turns into your secret weapon. Um, and so I'm just really excited about story, like telling stories um, about making 
new films. Like I've got a TV series that's in the works. Um, I'm executive producing a film that I'm shooting in July. Congrats. And just, con- yeah, thank you. Thank you. It's really great. And and I just, that stuff is what's igniting me at the moment to continue my passion, which has now become my job, which is crazy. I know. It's so crazy. It's like, yeah. even when like we're doing kind of a lot of, I'm creative as well, but even doing like pop alternative and everything, it's pretty cool to be able to kind of dive in and do it a lot because you love doing it where it doesn't feel like work sometimes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like- no, it doesn't. Especially all this other stuff. Like for me, acting feels a little bit like work now because I've been doing it for kind of professionally five, six years. Mm-hmm. But, you know, all of this stuff is so new and exciting. Absolutely. For sure. Hey, Peter, Exo mm-hmm. Kitty is available worldwide on Netflix right now. Is yeah, it, it, right, now. It, it, right now it's available. People can watch it, which is so freaking crazy. When they get a chance to watch it, what are you hoping they'll get out of it takeaway wise? Besides kind of having a good time. Because that's the point of, of it, course. right? Yeah. <laughs> of course. Yeah. You know, the whole the whole point of it is that it's it's a, a feel good emotional show. Um, and we just want people to have fun watching it. But I think touching on the identity and belonging discussion we had it def i want people to maybe just for even if it's a split second Mm -hmm. in the show i'm not asking you know to go and like have a full like cathartic cry after the show like or go and discover yourself um but just you know just think like you know what relationships could i maybe spend five more minutes on a day um or what what thing could i work on for myself that might make me happier in in a year or two years and just because because i think a lot of the show is really about that you know with with minor discovering that he does in fact maybe have feelings for kitty and um you know and then of course with like my storyline and kitty's storyline and day's story like all of these stories yuri especially yuri, especially yes, yuri. The, i was about to uh, yeah, say the of yuri story. Oh, <laughs> uh, um yeah i was like, and you, so, I was like, like are you the, saving you're saving the best one for last right i'm like yuri <laughs> Oh gosh, yes, my my sister. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's a important one. Uh yeah, probably should remember that one. Yeah. Um but yeah, yeah, just like that kind of thing, you know. Uh, absolutely, 100%. Peter, so great chatting with you. Thank you so much for joining me on Pop Turnative, man. Dude, thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Absolutely. Uh, XO Kitty, all episodes streaming now worldwide on Netflix. Your Instagram account, I think if they just put your name, they'll find it. Basically, right? Yep. It- Yep, it's a very weird name. It's very white and Czechoslovakian. So there you go. Peter Thurnwald, absolutely. Well, this has been Pop Turn. If YouTube.com slash Pop Turn for previous episodes, you can, of course, catch Peter Thurnwald as Alex in Exo Kitty. All episodes now on Netflix worldwide. Until next time, this is Peter and Peter Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Popternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.